Welcome to the Cross Canada Spotlight. I'm Mike Arsenault. Every week we take a look at a handful of the most interesting and entertaining stories produced across the Global News Network. First up this week is an emotional story out of Alberta about a brave little boy named Dax. He's been through so much in his young life. This story will make you appreciate what you have. Eruption! Five-year-old Dax has been obsessed with volcanoes for most of his life. Volcano birthday cakes, toys, and lots of lava in his hospital rooms. Every time he gets a poke and blood comes out, it's a volcano poke. It's an eruption. It's an eruption from his arm. <laughs> Dax himself burst into the Abercrombies' lives at age one as a foster child. He was born with urinary tract issues and by age four needed a kidney transplant. I always had the thought that I'd probably be... Um, you know, a good option. Foster dad Brad stepped up to donate, but within a few days, that kidney failed. Last spring, another kidney came up from a deceased donor. Doctors were optimistic. Usually transplants work. Kidney transplants are highly successful. <laughs> and um, the surgeon had told us nobody's this unlucky twice. Dax's second new kidney gave him a normal life. He ate non-stop and was full of energy. The family started planning a trip to Hawaii so Dax could see real volcanoes. Then another serious setback. And the surgeon came in and said, um, there's this aneurysm. We need to get him to the OR. And first we will try to save the boy and then we'll try to save the kidney. The donor kidney didn't survive, and the medical team even had to remove one of Dax's own kidneys to use its parts to save him. He now needs hemodialysis hooked up to a machine for four hours, three days a week. Family friend and physician Catherine Peters has been trying to organize the expensive procedure in Hawaii to make Dax's dream trip come true. How do you tell him after the 10th surgery, oh, well, guess what? You're sicker now than ever. We're tied to the hospital. We can't go. That's just heartbreaking. Dax was only supposed to be with the Abercrombies a few days a month. They adopted him last year, and though another kidney match is unlikely, they hope their boy will continue to light up their lives for a long time. Didn't take much to fall in love with that kid. <laughs> Sue Lingo, Global wonderful. News. As a new dad, stories like that hit me different now that I'm a parent. It just doesn't seem fair that Dax has had to face so much adversity already in his life. But it's great to see that he is now part of such a supportive family. I sincerely hope he gets the chance to see those volcanoes. Staying in Alberta for a story about a dog named Gus who beat long odds for a happy reunion with his humans. A bit of fun in the sun with a guy who's been part of the family for quite a while. Yeah, we've had him since he was a couple weeks old. Now at two and a half, Gus has had them chasing off in all directions after him. It starts as he's getting ready to climb aboard for a canoe trip when he hears a loud truck going by and bolts off into the bush. Within a few minutes, we knew that it was going to be difficult to find him. Searching through the trees and farmer's fields along the Red Deer River in central Alberta, worrying that Gus is gone for good. 40 degree heat, the thunderstorm. The coyotes, you know, howling in all these different directions late at night and you know your dog's out there missing. That was scary. After three days, they call in a veteran dog tracker, hiring Darlene Burt, based out of the Calgary area. She's someone who has dedicated the last 10 years of her life to, to look for missing dogs. Leading the search party, giving them tips on what they should be looking for. You'd see the footprint. One of his toes curves in towards the other one, um, and, and we saw that in the footprint. Putting up big posters. We set up a trail camera, and he was just sniffing the tent. That's how we had proof of life after the first six days that he was missing. On the eighth day, someone calls in a sighting. The search pays off. Oh my God. It was just euphoria. <laughs> oh, Gussie. Hi. It had been a rough ride for Gus. He is skin and bone. I was surprised. It was same old Gus. Wagging his little stumpy tail and <laughs> yeah, it was, it was amazing. He'll be on a leash the next time they head out with another lesson learned here. It's something that I think you know, brings everyone together when there's, a, when there's a, a, a loved one missing. Gil Tucker, Global News. 
Well, we're certainly running you through the emotional gamut today, aren't we? What a memorable reunion for Gus and his family. It's amazing that he was able to persevere on his own for so long, and kudos to the dog tracker for lending her skills to the search. Our next story can be described as perfectly serendipitous timing by a local Albertan photographer and a couple in love. It's what most people would call a picture-perfect spot. And one Friday night, a photographer came out to capture the moment. But what he didn't realize, he would be capturing the moment for one happy couple. I wasn't sure uh, what was going on. It was a typical night for Robert Crook. The sun was setting, the sky was lit up, so he went out to shoot some photos until two people walked into his shot. I was actually waiting for the couple to uh, leave so I can get a nice shot of the bridge and the fellow dropped on his knee so it looked like a proposal so I started basically just clicking away. Crook waited, hoping the couple would head his way. When they didn't, he turned to social media for help. Over 700 shares on Facebook later, he found them. I was tagged in it a few times with a bunch of people asking me, is this you? It looks like you, but I know you guys are already married, so I don't really know what you're doing there. <laughs> Brittany and Scott Lamb have been married for five years. For their fifth wedding anniversary, they went out for dinner, but Scott had other plans. Five, I think, days before, I uh, went into our bathroom drawer and I took Brittany's wedding rings from her. Uh, for the purpose of after our dinner that we were going to have, I planned on re-proposing to her. Brittany and Scott took a walk to the spot where he had originally proposed. And I got back down on one knee and I re-proposed to her, recommitted to her, and uh, she still said yes, so yeah. here we are. <laughs> when they saw the post on Facebook, it brought back old memories of the original proposal. Brittany's friend was hiding and snapped some photos. When we were here, I'd actually asked him if she was going to pop out of the bushes again with a a camera so <laughs> it wasn't her I guess it, it was wasn't her else. it was someone else that happened to <laughs> be there Brittany and Scott have not met Kruk yet but he did offer them some family photos and these ones well they'll be planned Jessica Robb Global News well that was some pretty good timing on Robert's behalf and there is a lot about social media of course not to like but for instances like this where Robert wanted to track down Brittany and Scott social media can definitely be a force for good. To the East Coast now, where the idea of seed saving is really starting to take root. You see what I did there? Take a look. Hiding in plain sight. These New Brunswick gardeners are learning how to be seed saving savvy. And we can just crack them open and take up the seed. As we've all seen in the past year with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the uh, interest in gardening has gone up, but the interest in seed saving hasn't necessarily gone up. Alicia Clarkson runs the Peter McKee Community Food Garden in Moncton. She's teaching gardeners how to collect seeds from their own plants to be used for next year's crop. You're literally saving your seeds, putting them in a little box, and you're putting next year's garden away in the fall for next year. The seeds are this plant's children. Clarkson says the idea to hold a workshop on seed harvesting was prompted by a shortage of fruit and vegetable seeds at the height of the pandemic last year. I had gardeners coming to me saying, you know, I can't find seeds anywhere. Everyone's sold out. Probably more people got interested in because of that. But I think we should be interested in this no matter what. Because collecting your own seeds makes you more self-sufficient as a gardener, according to the community food mentor who organized the seminar. You know, you don't have to buy things. You don't have to commodify plants and seeds. You know, it's all available and we can help each other do it as well. It's a great community builder. Seed saving also lends to healthier, more robust gardens for future years. Every year your um, seeds get a little bit more suited to your environment. She says knowing where to find and how to collect the seeds from various plants takes some practice. Anyone can do it, you just need the time and the patience. And in the end, every seed collected represents a little piece of history that can be passed on from one season and even one generation to the next. I have a number of seeds in my collection that are hundreds of years old that were saved again and again and again and again year after year to kind of literally preserve that little piece of history. Shelley Steves, Global News, Moncton. That community garden is actually located on an old tennis court. Ordinarily, I wouldn't be happy with the elimination of a tennis court as court time is hard to come by these days. But I suppose I can make an exception for such a good initiative. To another hobby for many, reading. 
An Ontario woman is ensuring that more diverse options are being highlighted for those looking to wet their reading whistle. You have Benny, I have Ja, and let's make sure everybody's ready to listen to our story. Michelle McDonald is a child protection worker and a mother who came up with the concept of her YouTube channel, Ruthie's Reading Room, two years ago while on maternity leave with her daughter. She reads to children from books by Black authors throughout Canada and the United States in an engaging way. Inspired to combine her work with children and her love of books, she created her YouTube channel to promote diversity among children in Kingston and to offer better representation to Black children. So I choose books with strong Black voices and imagery. This allows me to collaborate with independent Black authors and ensure that my channel is filled with books that have that same message. Ruthie's Reading Room has reached over 500 subscribers and has shared over 90 books so far. I now have a radio show on Amherst Island Radio, 93.1. So every Saturday morning at 9 a.m., you can hear Ruthie's Reading Room audio version. The Kingston Frontenac Public Library has also been working hard to highlight voices from marginalized communities. Jake Miller, the librarian at the Central Branch, says that they've released an Indigenous-focused reading list in an effort to reflect on the ongoing trauma that Indigenous people face. So the TRC wanted to raise awareness of uh, issues related to residential schools and the consequences of the residential schools. So we said that if we could increase knowledge within the community, knowledge breeds familiarity, familiarity breeds comradeship. And so far, the library's Every Child Matters reading list is doing just that, with all 21 books already checked out. Just to have that direct feedback and validation from the public and the Indigenous community uh, that, you know, we're on the right track. Like, please keep this. Kingston Frontenac Public Library's reading list is available for pre-order on their site. Ruthie's Reading Room is accessible on YouTube any time of day or night. Linda Mohammed, Global News, Kingston. That's a great idea. It really is important for kids to see people who look like them represented in all forms of media. I wish continued success to Michelle's YouTube channel. In fact, you can check it out right now after this. That's it for the Cross Canada Spotlight. Be sure to watch Global News Weekend Saturday and Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. on the Global TV app.